Hi, everyone, and welcome to week eight. This is Professor Tracy Savage, Journalism 101. Yes, happy midterm week. May the odds be forever in your favor. You're going to be taking the midterm this week. But before that, um, in my lecture today, I'm going to be reviewing exercise six, Scholar, which was your homework uh, last week. And I'm also going to be assigning you assignment number seven. You're going to be producing a video news story, a broadcast news story. And I'm going to be going through the steps in this lecture on how to do that. Um, you're going to have plenty of time to get this done. I want to get you started now, get you a, an early start on it um, so that um, you can get working on it. And then, of course, you're going to take the midterm this week. So let's begin by uh, taking a look at exercise six. You were to write a lead for um, titled or slugged scholar. So here were the facts of this case, um, the important facts, the facts that were relevant. We're writing a story for Wednesday, July 9th. Uh, it was announced on Monday, July 7th, on Monday, that um, Kelly uh, had won a $55,000 scholarship. Kelly Manley uh, is a 23-year-old man, uh, and Kelly is from Woodland Hills, although we call him Manley uh, when we refer to him um, after we use his first, his complete name. So Kelly Manley was the valedictorian at Pierce College uh, at the graduation on uh, June 10th, so last month, and Kelly Manley will transfer to the University of California at Berkeley in the fall, coming up this fall, and he plans to major in dance. So those are the uh, facts that really we care about. Um, we don't care that he's an orphan. We don't care that he's living with his uncle, and we don't care that his uncle is unemployed. They're really not relevant to this story, okay? We also don't care that his uncle worked in aerospace. Really doesn't matter for this story. So some AP style issues that were pretty common, some of the mistakes um, as I was correcting your work, um, are first of all um, money, dollars, $55,000. So you use the dollar sign and then you use 55 comma zero zero. That's correct. Not 55,000 where you spell out thousand. Um, also, when you're going to be listing the name of the school, University of California, comma, Berkeley. That is correct. And you would use the entire name on first reference. If you're going to um, mention it a second time, maybe later in the story, you could just, you could just say UC Berkeley or even just Berkeley. Um, but the first reference, it's always um, University of California, Berkeley not UC Berkeley on the first reference. Um, and then also, um, when you're talking about the valedictorian, um, this year's Pierce College valedictorian or the Pierce College valedictorian is correct. Um, and finally, um, when you're discussing uh, where the quote or where the information came from, if you're going to attribute it to the president of Pierce College, um, do you capitalize president or not? Well, uh, here are some rules. According to the AP style book, it holds that you should capitalize president only as a formal title that is before one or more names. For example, if you're mentioning President Donald Trump, you would capitalize the P, or presidents, George W. Bush and Bill Clinton, or um, any other president. But president, the word should be lowercase, in all other uses. For example, the president will make an announcement. So small p there. I am now announcing my candidacy for president. Again, small p or Roosevelt was president during the Great Depression. So uh, that's an AP style thing, can be a little tricky, so you need to pay attention to that. Um, so uh, here are some examples of some students' work um, that uh, had some issues. Uh, it's, this particular lead says, Pierce College President Robert Garber announced that an orphan, and you don't need commas, Pierce College President Robert Garber, you don't need those commas, uh, announced that an orphan living with his unemployed uncle, John Manley, will transfer to the University of Calif, comma, John Manley won a $55,000 scholar, or yeah, $55,000 scholarship, and this fall, Berkeley plans to major in dance studies. Okay, lots of problems with this one. First of all, uh, just really simple, the attribution, 
where this quote is coming from needs to come at the end. So you would make the announcement and then say according to. Uh, what happened is more important than who's making the announcement. So the attribution needs to go at the end. Um, it's not relevant, not relevant that um, the Kelly Manley is orphaned and living with his uncle who is unemployed. We don't care about that. We also don't use unfamiliar names in the lead. Robert Garber um, probably wouldn't want to use it even if you're going to attribute this quote to him at the end, according to Pierce College President Robert Garber. You could just say, according to the Pierce College President. We definitely no, don't need John Manley, the uncle's name, in there at all. And look at that, Kelly Manley is spelled wrong. That is a gross factual error. You do not spell a person's name wrong. Big, big mistake. And then um, you need to spell out California, University of California, not Calif, uh, and include the full title, University of California, comma, Berkeley. Um, and then finally, what we have here is called a, um, a comma splice. It's really, it looks like three sentences three complete sentences that should have periods between them. Uh, instead, this person used commas to try to make it one long sentence. Um, and it's wrong. It should be, these are separate sentences. Um, and in the end, that last little bit, Berkeley plans to major in dance studies. That is a gross factual error. Apparently, they confused Berkeley with the name Manly. Um, so that's another mistake. So you have to be just really careful when you're writing these leads. You know, we're only talking 35 words, and um, you got to go over it with a fine-tooth comb and don't make what really are just kind of sloppy mistakes. So again, you're going to lose five points if you don't move the attribution to the end. Um, if it happened more than a week ago, you would give the day of the week, or, or you'd give the date. In this case, it was only two days earlier, so you just give the day. Um, Kelly is a man, so uh, this one has... Um, indicates that it's her class, but it's really a his class. This person, uh, pr this particular example, has Kelly listed as a woman. Um, and here you have the attribution at the beginning, and then you have um, that Robert Gardner announced that Kelly Manley, who graduated as a valedictorian of her class this past June, will transfer to the University of, Ber of California. Again, you spell out the word uh, won a $55,000 scholarship. Um, it's really hard to, to follow. You split the subject, who is this person, the valedictorian, from the action, uh, winning a scholarship. And you need to put them closer together. Uh, it just doesn't really make sense. So um, here's my version. Um, so the who is this year's valedictorian. We don't use the name in the lead. Um, and to make it even more specific, this year's valedictorian at Pierce College, you'd need that, uh, has won a $55,000 scholarship and will be announcing, will be transferring to the University of California, Berkeley in the fall. And then I have the attribution according to the president of Pierce College. So that is my version. Um, not necessarily the only way to write the story, my version, but um, it is a correct way. And just to give you an idea of uh, one way to do this uh, without mistakes. So now I'm going to assign for you assignment number seven. You're going to be producing a TV news package. It's called a package. It's a complete story, a self-contained TV news story that you will shoot, write, voice the narration, and edit it all together. It's going to be a uh, complete news package. So you are assigned to read all of the instructions before you begin. I'm going to go through this for you now, but these instructions are also listed in the handout packet that's found in the, uh, the first module, uh, assignment number seven. Follow the instructions carefully. If you do it step by step, it's really not hard to do it all, and you may find it uh, fun and creative. Um, there are additional resources posted in the week eight module, including examples of TV news packages and a sample script, how you would structure a script, and how to edit in iMovie with links to tutorials. So um, everything you're going to need to do this assignment is in uh, this particular module with examples. Um, and then I'm going to go through the instructions now. And it's due week 12, so you have four weeks to put this together. It shouldn't take you that long. Um, I used to produce three broadcast news stories in a day. Sometimes I'd produce one in 10 minutes. 
um, shoot it, write it, edit it, voice it, track it, put it together, get it on the air. Uh, it's called crash in a story and we would slam them together. But um, I wanna give you time to work on this and uh, so that you can do it right. So it's due week 12 and I'll be reminding you as we get closer. So today journalists have to do much more than just write stories. They have to be able to shoot pictures, video and photos, and produce broadcast pieces for TV and the web. Your final project, assignment number seven, will be either an MP4 or a .mov file, uh, that's your completed project, what you output it as, um, that can be, that file can be loaded directly to Canvas if you want. So you can upload a dot .mov or a dot .mp4 file directly to the Canvas Dropbox. Or you can um, upload your story to YouTube and then put the YouTube link uh, directly into Canvas or on a Word file or a PDF file and upload that file. Um, so I want you to send me your story idea and um, I'll put you in touch with the Roundup web editor. Uh, and you can check with the editor at theroundupnews.com to see if they believe that your idea relates to Pierce College. And if it does, if you submit your story to the Roundup News for their online site, you'll get extra credit points. Um, it's just that the topic has to be related to Pierce College. So, so check with me. Um, send me your story idea, and I'll let you know if I think um, that the Roundup News folks will want to publish it on their online site. So instructions um, are in the master instructions file, and it does give you a step-by-step -step guide um, with how to do assignment seven, and it begins with picking a topic to cover. So number one says select and then research a news topic to cover. Select something that is visual, with people and general activity, usually that's better. It, it makes for a more interesting story. Avoid covering meetings, unless there's a topic from the meeting that you could turn into a story. Um, but good ideas for stories include like a protest rally, some kind of campus event, an animal adoption, farmer's market, um, something that's visual. But whatever your topic, try to give it a news angle. Ask why does this matter? Who does this affect? Why should we know about this? What kind of information are you providing that's helpful for your viewers? And then you're gonna to wanna to set up interviews. So you need at least one on-camera interview for your story. Uh, select a source who's knowledgeable about the topic and select sources who can add information and or emotion to your story and give their opinions. Select sources who speak in complete sentences. You definitely want people who are um, who are comfortable and can speak clearly and are somewhat animated. Uh, they make for the best sound bites. So then you wanna shoot your interviews. Um, so as far as audio is concerned, if you have an external microphone that's plugged into your camera, hold that mic about six to 12 inches from the source. Uh, you need it close, right up under their chin. Um, if you're using the mic on the camera, make sure the camera is close to the source and make sure you're recording it in a very quiet place. If you're using that built-in camera, any ambient sound is gonna get picked up and it will negatively impact the audio. So you wanna hold the camera, you know, maybe, I don't know, a foot to 18 inches away from their face. I mean, pretty close. Um, and make sure there's no background noise. Find a quiet location. But also, as far as video is concerned, you want to find a well-lit location where the source uh, is evenly lit. Big shadows across their face just won't look good. Uh, and find a location with an interesting background. Do not put them up against a blank white wall um, or something that's just too busy or distracting. Or don't shoot them in front of a window or a white, bright wall or window. Um, it just is not gonna work. Um, a bookcase, pull them about five feet away and, and have them sit down with a bookcase behind them. That's interesting. Um, if you're outside, do it with uh, bushes or trees or any kind of greenery behind them. That makes for uh, an interesting background as well. But um, you don't want a blank wall or anything too bright or, or too distracting. Like if there's a lot of people moving around in the background, uh, that's not gonna work. 
So after you do your interview, you need to shoot B-roll clips uh, that will help you tell the story. B-roll is uh, the video clips that that uh, basically go in your story. And for a minute 30 story, that's how long your story is going to be, about a minute 30, so 90 seconds, you're going to need at least 15 to 20 different B-roll shots. More options is, would be better, but um, at least 15 to 20. And for each clip, record the scene for about 10 seconds before you stop. Um, you're not going to use all 10 seconds of every clip. In fact, when you edit your story, each shot shouldn't last more than five or six seconds. But um, it's good to have options and it's good to have um, a little, you know, a few extra seconds on the end of each shot just in case. But when you're shooting this now, your B-roll, shoot a variety of angles and frame sizes. Shoot wide, shoot medium, and shoot tight shots. Um, don't shoot pans or tilts or zooms. Don't move the camera around, zooming in and out. Just steady shots that don't move. Let the action in front of the camera move. But the camera really needs to stay still. It just looks so unprofessional. If your movement in the camera is bouncy, um, if it's jerky, uh, it just looks amateur. So you really generally want to keep the camera steady, um, shooting wide shots, lots of medium shots, and tight shots are the most interesting. Close-ups of people's faces. Um, if someone's working on a, on a cash register or at the computer, tight shots of their hands. Um, unless you're following action, like someone on a skateboard, or maybe you're covering sports, um, you know, then you might want to follow them with the camera, but otherwise, really, the camera needs to be rock solid steady. Use a tripod or use something to prop the camera up so that it's not shaky. And when you're doing your interview, too, try to keep it as steady as, as can be. And um, when you're shooting your interview, you want to um, crop it right across the chest at the bottom and just about an inch or two above the head. So it's a pretty tight shot. Um, you don't want it from waist up. You want it from about um, chest up, like where they're, they're like if they're wearing a t-shirt with a pocket in or, or a, t a tie, like right in the middle of their tie uh, and on up um, is where you want to crop it. It's, it's not really a tight head shot, but it's also not from the waist up either. So next you want to prepare to write your story. So before you write anything, you want to log all of your video clips. So to log means to watch the clips and take notes. So you're going to want to log the B-roll and write down what B-roll shots you have and the, the ones that work. Note what shots that don't work. Note the close-up shots and the wide shots. You write this down, and this is going to help you later on when you're editing. So, for example, your B-roll log might look like clip number one, tight shot of speaker at podium. Clip number two, wide shot of crowd listening. Clip number three, tight shot of person listening in crowd. Um, and the more detail you put in your log, just the easier it is for you when it comes to edit because you can find the shots that you need. And then you want to log your interviews that you made. Um, that's basically transcribing word for word what your interview subject said. Write down what the source is, including what they say, including the time on the clip. Um, and uh, this will help you so that when you go to write your story, you know exactly what your sources are saying and you can write to your sound bites. So um, now it's time, number six, is to write your story. So review an example of a script structure. Um, it's titled Broadcast Journalism Script Example. It's posted in Canvas uh, in this uh, module. Um, and make sure you uh, read that uh, and take a look at it. Uh, in broadcast, we use a two-column structure, um, left column, right column, with all of the audio on the right side, and everything that you're going to hear is written on the right side, and everything that you're going to see is on the left side. And so when you write your story, you're going to weave the sound bites throughout the story. Sound bites are the, the quotes in, or equivalent to quotes in print stories. So first come up with a strong lead. Broadcast leads t tend to be less formal, more catchy than print leads. Broadcast leads don't have to include any facts at all. 
um, but just tell the gist of the story. The idea with a broadcast lead is to capture people's attention and get them to want to listen further. Once you have a strong lead, write the rest of the story, weaving in the facts and the sound bites. Remember, in the pyramid structure, uh, inverted pyramid style in print, you put all of the main who, what, where, when, why, and how in the lead. In broadcast, we don't. We sprinkle the facts throughout the story. Um, and then your last line of your script should include, for the Roundup News, I'm, and say your name, Tracy Savage, reporting. And so you're going to write the story, sprinkling the facts throughout it, and then uh, write transitions to your sound bites, and then include your sound bites. So then you need to record your voiceover, the VO track, because you're going to be recording um, the narration, um, all the parts, everything that's not a soundbite, it's going to be in your voice. So the VO track is the part of the story where the reporter's voice, your voice, is heard narrating the information in the story. Read your script into the same camera that you recorded your interviews and your B-roll. You're only going to be using the audio portion of this, and you're going to cover that voiceover track with B-roll video clips that you shot earlier. Uh, for each line of track, begin the recording by slating the track number because you'll number every line of track that you have written and give a countdown before you begin to narrate the script. So for example, track number one, and you might want to say take one, three, two, one, and then you start reading what you wrote. And then track number two, three, two, one. One. And if you make a mistake, you could say track number two, take two, three, two, one. Uh, it, this all will make it so much easier when it's time to edit your story. All right, so now it's time to edit your story. You've done your interviews, you've shot your B-roll, you've logged the tape and you've seen what you've got, and then you've written your story about a minute 30, um, and um, you can time it uh, before you start to edit it after you've written it um, to see if it, how long it's going to be. Time how long the sound bites are. The sound bites shouldn't be longer than uh, 15 seconds, 15 to 20 seconds max. Uh, I don't want a longer sound bite than that. Um, so figure out how long the sound bites are and then um, time how long the tracks are, your voiceover tracks. And um, if it's too long, cut some material out. So um, you're going to be editing with iMovie. So if you've never edited anything before and you've never used iMovie, don't worry. It's really not that hard. There is a tutorial, iMovie tutorial, that's posted in Canvas uh, that will help you. Uh, I have it. I moved it down into this uh, module, this week eight module. And so you can um, read it there. It's also posted in the resources module with videos, tips, and tutorials. So you can find it there. So. Um, open up iMovie or similar video editing software. If you're used to using um, Premiere Pro or some other type of software, you, you're welcome to use that. But um, open up iMovie. Now, if you own a Mac computer, iMovie is standard. Also, the Mac computers uh, in the classroom uh, in Village 8300, Village 8300 on the campus of Pierce College, um, there are computers there that have iMovie installed on them. And you can use these computers during the open lab hours or during regular class sessions when I'm in there uh, with the permission of me or the other instructors. So the lab hours are posted on the door um, of the lab, but you can always email me and ask me and I'll let you know if you need to um, go use the computers on the campus of Pierce College. Remember, though, to bring an external hard drive with you, uh, because if you don't finish your story, you're going to need to save everything on your hard drive. Uh, these computers erase all the data once you log off. So um, you upload or import all of your media, which would be um, all of your B-roll clips, your interview clips, and your voiceover track clips into iMovie. So it's import media, and you'll move import that into iMovie. And then you're going to edit first. You're going to lay down the A roll. Um, that's all the audio and the sound bites. So you'd lay down your opening track, track number one. Um, maybe then you go to a sound bite. You'd lay that down and then track number two and then track number three and then maybe a sound bite number two and then track number four and then your final track, something like that. Um, so you're going to lay all that down first, and then you will add B-roll on top of it. Um, 
So wherever your audio track is, you're going to need to add pictures that you had shot earlier. That's the B-roll, and that's where you would edit that next. So um, if you watch the tutorial, it will help you on how to put this together. And um, if you need extra help, or if you're really, really stuck, um, you can always um, contact me, and we can figure out a time uh, to meet in my office, and I can help you. But um, usually, the uh, students don't have any problem. They just follow the tutorial and they jump right into it and it's really not hard to do. So start working on this early. Um, again, consult with me on topics if you aren't sure. Um, it's really uh, worth it to use a topic that um, the Roundup folks will put online because you'll get extra credit for it. If you're going to be doing all this work, uh, you might as well get some extra credit for it. All right. So I'm always here for you to help. If you have any problems, just reach out. All right. So uh, this week you're taking the midterm. And remember, you can use your one page study guide uh, with notes on front and back of the paper to help you. Once you begin your midterm, you have two hours to complete the midterm. And you must complete this midterm by the end of this week, which of course ends Sunday at 11.59 p.m. All right, folks, uh, don't panic. Good luck and uh, have a good week.